Hi everyone, welcome back to my lab. In today's video, which is going to be a first impressions on the brand new Too Faced Tutti Fruity collection. I just got mine in the mail today and I couldn't wait to get it on my face. This is the look that I came up with with a few of the items. Even though these are only my first impressions, I do have some pretty good ideas about how the products apply and which ones are worth the money and which ones maybe not so much. This collection has 10 products total and of the 10, I did purchase 7. So I have a very nice selection of products to go over with you. Let's Let's go ahead and get started. Let's begin with the eyeshadow palette because that is what I applied first since it's a brand new product to me I wanted to use it before I did my complexion. The palette I chose to apply to my eyes is the Razzle Dazzle Berry eyeshadow palette. This is what the outer carton looks like. You do have the ingredients listed on the back. It's a seven shade eyeshadow palette and this one is themed with the berry. On the back side it's a metallic gold finish and you do have a sticker with the shade names. Now on the side there's the Too Faced logo along with a little lip which you use to open up the palette. There is a very nice mirror here with a nice raspberry detail. This one does remain propped up and inside you see all of your shades. Okay, first you have Dazzle which is a satin finish beige. You then have Pink Suede which is a dusty rose matte. Razzle is a beautiful rose gold metallic with more of a cool tone. Buried Treasure is more of a burgundy metallic. Boysenberry is your second matte shade in the palette and that one is a purple. Bad to the Berry is a black and purple shade with micro glitters inside. And the last shade is That's My Jam which is a beautiful metallic. Clearly this is the palette that I chose to create my eye look today. I started the look by applying this shade to my crease and then I deepened it up with the darker purple. So those are the two mattes in the palette. They blended fine. They actually performed a lot better than they swatched so I was happy Happy with that. They do kick up a little bit of powder so you want to go in with a light hand and tap off your brush. I then started working on the lid and I used the two metallic center shades here. With the first one I wanted to test out the waters and see how it would function so I first tried it with a dry MAC 242 brush and I wasn't getting a lot of payoff especially because the shade is a little close to my skin tone so I wasn't seeing a lot of color payoff. It applies much better with my finger but absolutely best with a dampened brush. I tried all three and I do like the way that it looks foiled, but it did apply very well with my finger as well. The other shade, the more uh, maroon metallic shade, this one goes on fine with a brush, but it applies beautifully with a dampened brush. So that one performed very nicely. On the lower lash line, I repeated the two matte shades and then I did line with this blackened purple shade. The only shade that I did not apply to my eyes is the very last one. Overall, the palette performed really well. I'm really happy with the eye look that I created. I I think it looks pretty and it was very simple and quick to create as well. This palette does retail for $34 and it does come in another variation which is the sparkling pineapple and that is what the outer carton looks like. And here's the palette itself. I really like the outer packaging of this one a little bit more because of the glitter detail. This glitter is completely coated so it isn't something that's going to be released in your makeup collection. It's completely covered and smooth. So similar to the other one, you have the little ledge and you open up the palette. Palette. This one has a cute pineapple detail and here are the shades for that one. The first one is the shade Yum Yum which is a matte beige color which is very close to my daughter's skin tone which is why you can't see it. The next one is Coconut Sugar which is a satin finish. Passports and Pineapples is a lovely matte brown which does not swatch very well. And then you have Sparkling Pineapple which actually crumbled a little bit underneath my finger when I was swatching but it does swatch out beautifully. Next you have the most unique shade in the palette which is Island Queen and this one is a beautiful duochrome green gold. Next you have a deeper brown matte which is Tutti Cutie and lastly a more metallic champagne which is called Pineapple Cooler. So I did not apply this eyeshadow palette to my eyes so I can only go off of the swatches. It swatched very similarly to the berry palette so my guess is that the quality is going to be about the same and it does apply better than the swatches appear. This is essentially a neutral palette but it does have a little bit of interest with that duochrome green shade. After seeing this palette I really think that they could have done a little bit more green in the tones like maybe yellow and green but I understand that they wanted to have at least one of them be more neutral for neutral lovers. The pineapple palette retails for $34 as well just like the berry palette. They do have distinctive smells even though I like the outer packaging for this one. I also prefer the scent of this one because it's a lot milder. It smells 
smells like a very mild version of the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, maybe a little bit sweeter. This one, on the other hand, it smells like Robitussin to me, like the berry scented or berry flavored Robitussin, and I don't really care for that scent or flavor. <laughs> And so I find it a little obnoxious, actually. I don't really like the fragrance. And this one has a much stronger fragrance. So if scents bother you, I'd probably just stay away from this whole collection. This one is a little bit harder to discern, as I mentioned. So just something I wanted to point out. Both of the palettes do come with a typical Too Faced pamphlet, which give you three different looks that you can create with each palette. Now, personally, as much as I prefer the outer packaging of the pineapple palette, I think that the berry palette is a lot more unique, and this would be my recommendation if you were debating between one or the other. And since I have applied it to my eyes, all except for one shade, it is really good quality, and I think that you can get a lot of really nice looks with this one. You can get nice looks with the other one too, but I think that that one would be more easily duped in your collection already. The next product I tried out was the Tutti Fruity Do You Full Coverage Fresh Glow Foundation. And this one is infused with juicy watermelon and fresh cucumber. This is what the packaging looks like. You do get a very generous amount of the foundation. You get 1.35 fluid ounces and it does come with a pump. Now I picked mine up in the shade Natural Beige. I had heard from other people that the foundation oxidized but natural beige I believe is the shade that I tried out in the peach perfect and even though my skin type did not agree with that foundation the color choice was fine so that's what I went with when I ordered the foundation and I think that it was a good shade match for me I did find that it does oxidize if left sitting out but I haven't found that if I blended it right away that it oxidized on my skin now I actually was surprised with how easily the foundation blended I first started with three pumps because when I pumped it out, it looked like maybe two pumps wasn't going to be enough. It was a little bit thick. It's not runny at all. It's definitely a gel consistency. I swiped it on with a foundation brush and I found that two pumps would have been fine for the level of coverage that I like. I have to say, I don't think that this foundation is a full coverage foundation at all. I would call it a medium coverage foundation, which you can probably build up to full, but I left as is because a medium coverage is the maximum that I prefer. I was surprised with how easily it blended out. I was barely tapping with my Eco Tool sponge and it smoothed over my face really easily. And I think that that may be because it has a lot of dimethicone. It's supposed to be long wearing, dewy finish, hydrating, and brightening. I have to say, I can't really speak to the long wearing, but I did find it hydrating and it was definitely a dewy finish when I applied it. My skin was glowing. I didn't have any kind of radiance primer underneath, and so it definitely does have a glow. I think that this is a really nice response to the Peach Perfect Matte Foundation because a lot of people wanted a dewier version of that and I think that we have it in this one. Now this one is scented as Juicy Watermelon and Fresh Cucumber. It does have that scent. This one is a pleasant scent and it does dissipate after a little while but when you first use it you definitely can smell it. Based on my experience so far I am liking the foundation and I would recommend it for someone with a dry skin type like myself. One thing I should mention is I did feel that I had to set the foundation because it felt a little bit sticky on my face even after letting it sit for a while and I felt better after applying a sheer layer of translucent powder and the sticky feeling went away but so did a little bit of the dewiness so that's just something to keep in mind. The foundation retails for $36 and it comes in 26 different shades which is a very nice range and it has a very nice gradient from lighter skin tones to darker skin tones. There's always room for improvement but I think that they did a good job for a first launch and only 20 shades. The next product that I tried was the Too Faced Tutti Fruity Fresh Squeezed Highlighting Drops and I picked mine up in the Sparkling Pina Colada. This one retails for $30. This is what the packaging looks like and comes in an additional shade which is more pink and I think that one would be more suitable for deeper skin tones so I picked up the lighter of the two shades. And this product, I don't know how I feel about this one. I applied it right over the top of my foundation because I wanted to have an idea of how the finish would be and how it would layer on top of the foundation and it layered okay. It's an interesting product because when I first opened it the shimmers had completely settled to the bottom of the bottle and then all you had was the water. It is definitely a water-based highlighter and it's very different than the Cover FX highlighting drops, very different than the Marc Jacobs Do You coconut highlighting drops, very different than the ABH. The Marc Jacobs and ABH are more like a gel. The Cover FX ones are more like liquid metal and they don't separate the way that this does. It tells you to shake it and and I shook it and I don't know how I feel about this. It is scented as well. It's scented similarly to the pineapple eyeshadow palette and it is in a, the dropper format. Even though it doesn't 
feel this way, it's kind of like micro shimmer floating in water. That's what it feels like. And when you rub your hands together and you have it, you don't feel the shimmer because it's very, very fine. And when you apply it, it almost looks like wet luminosity as opposed to a metallic sheen, if that makes any sense. And I applied it to my face and it looks okay, but then when I look at it in natural light, it looks like I might have glitter, but then if you look closely, you cannot see the individual glitter particles. It's really strange. I think that this is probably the most unique product in the collection, but I can't say that it's unique in a good way. I think this might look good applied to the body. It's a nice shimmer, but it's not going to take the place of my more jelly gel-like highlighters. I think I definitely prefer those. These retail for $30, which is really expensive. You do get almost 0.6 fluid ounces, which is a good amount. It'll last forever, but I don't know. So far, this one hasn't won me over. I'll have to play with it some more, but you'll definitely see how it looks applied. Let me know what you think about this one. I would say if you're debating on anything in the collection, wait on this one until you can try it out in, in store because there's really nothing that I can compare it to in my collection. It's very different in terms of its formulation. So I did also grab the Tutti Frutti Pineapple Paradise Strobing Bronzer Highlighting Duo. And this is the only bronzer in the collection. It only comes in the one shade. It does have have similar packaging to the pineapple palette as well as the scent is going to be the same. Here's what the product looks like. It retails for $30 and it's sort of a bronzer highlighter duo. You can mix them together to have more of a luminous bronzer or you can use them separately. You can use this one for highlighting unless you have a very fair skin tone then it might not work for you. And the bronzer has a very nice sheen similar to the butter bronzer. It's not a shimmery bronzer but it does have a luminosity to it. I applied the product separately today although because because I applied the highlighter on top of the drops, I'm not really sure yet about its own intensity. I did like the bronzer, however, but I have to say it's not going to suit every skin tone, and I think that they should have had more shades of this one. But it is a nice product if it's something that you think might work for your particular skin tone, and I am liking this one. I did also pick up a blush. This is the Tutti Frutti Fruit Cocktail Blush Duo. I chose mine in the shade Strawberry. To be honest, I wanted the peachy tone one, which I think was called apricot or apricot something. It was a peachy tone blush, but I opted for this one because I have a lot of peachy tone blushes already, and I thought that this one was a little bit different in my collection. It's a cool tone blush, and again, you have a duo. You can mix them both together or each one separately. The finish on these blushes is definitely luminous, so if you do not like luminous blushes, I don't think you're going to like these. I don't have the entire collection, but I think all of the blushes have a similar finish, and so I, that's something I thought I'd mention. I do have swatches of them, and I do like them. I think that they're very nice. They're shades that can be built up so it's not too too pigmented on first application which is nice because looking at the products in the pan you could go overboard if they were super super pigmented so I think that it's very nice for a blush formulation. This one does retail for $30 and it does come in three other configurations besides this one. The collection also had these lip glazes. They are uh, Juicy Fruits Comfort Lip Glazes and they're basically lip glosses. They're very pigmented and I picked up two different types of glosses. The first one I picked up is the one I'm wearing today which is the shade Home Slice and this one is just a pigmented lip gloss with no shimmer. I also picked up the shade Takes Two to Mango and this one is an orangey gloss with a little bit of shimmer. When you apply these you do have a slight cooling sensation but they are comfortable and they are not sticky or goopy on the lips. The applicator is very nice doe foot and they do have a scent again. Also sort of smell medicinal to me. I think the artificial berry flavor is just not working. That's the Home Slice one. The Mango Tango one, it smells similar. It would have been nice if the different shades had different scents as well, but they smell the same to me. I haven't worn this one, but I did swatch it for you. As far as this one, it is comfortable on the lips. The packaging is really cute. All of them have sort of this little ledge cut off, which is interesting, but I don't think that there's anything super unique about these glosses. They're nice, but at $20, they're a little bit expensive and they do come in 12 different shades for you to choose from. The last thing that I picked up was one of the liquid shadows. They're called Twinkle Twinkle Liquid Glitter Eyeshadows. This is the outer carton and this is the packaging. It's very similar to the lip glosses. 
right? Same size and everything as the lip gloss, but this one has a black lid. And these are kind of like the Stila glitters, but I have to say at $22, these come in eight different colors. Just from swatching, because I haven't worn it on my eyes, it seems to me that the Stila pack much more of a punch. Although I know that there's variations even in the Stila formula where some shades are a lot more pigmented than others, but this one just seems a little bit lighter. I do like the shade though. It's a copper base with green micro glitters, and I just really like the green tones right Right now and that's why I chose this one. I thought it was very different than the Stila in the sense that these shimmers are more gold and green rather than silvery. The Stila ones they have a tendency to be very silver and these are a little bit more gold and green. So I will try this and I'll definitely get back to you. That's everything that I picked up from the collection. I didn't get to try out that product but I tried out everything else. The three products that I did not pick up, one is a stick highlighter like a cream highlighter and after trying this liquid one I am kind of wishing I picked that one up instead since I've had really good luck with the cover effects, the Fenty, the Hourglass stick highlighters. I'm thinking I should have gotten that one instead. I also did not pick up the setting spray. I was a little bit hesitant because it is an illuminating spray which I think might have shimmer in it and I don't want any glitter sprays on my face so I chose not to purchase that one until I can check it out in store and see how I feel about it. And the last thing was the brightening banana powder. I have so many powders right now with how many powders have been released that it just makes no sense for me to pick up another powder at the present moment but it's definitely something I'll swatch out in store. So that's everything for this video. Let me know what you think about this kind of format with the first impressions just sort of sneak peek into the collections. I sort of took inspiration from how Tati does her reviews a little bit where she applies the makeup first and then she just sit down and talk to you about it but if you prefer the tutorial format where I walk you through every step then definitely let me know because I'd rather make my videos in a way that you will get the most from them. Based on my impressions today, I would have to say that if I were going to pick out favorites or really standout products from the collection, I would have to name the Berry Eyeshadow Palette, the Pineapple Bronzer, and I'm also liking the foundation. I think that it's really nice. So these are the three products that I'm liking the most right now. The lip glosses are nice but nothing really special. The blushes are also very nice but a little bit pricey for what they are. Jerry's still out on the glitter shadow since I haven't tried it and right now my least favorite product has to be the highlighting drops. I have to play with these a little bit more so I will definitely do a haul update or something like that and let you know how things come along as I try the collection a little bit more but I'm very curious to know what you picked up from the collection if anything or what appealed most to you. Thank you so much for watching my video today. Today, if you enjoyed it, found it helpful, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel. If you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this video, then hopefully you'll consider subscribing and joining me for a future video. I hope you're having a lovely day and I look forward to seeing you again in my next video. Bye-bye.